So is Gohan going to be trying to pull a Krillin here or, well, you know. Hey folks, Masako X here. In this story, there is a lot of potential to see from Gohan, who was the original focus of Dragon Ball Z. Until Goku was reminded about how much he mattered to the series, and how Toriyama had run out of ideas for Gohan, you know, his son, and so reverted to the tried and tested method of making Goku the best thing since sliced bread. That being said, we still have a matter of focusing on something of Gohan, which was unique to him, and as such made him a compelling entity. A hybrid Saiyan, with more potential theoretically than anyone else in the show. His rage boosts were a signature part of the first half of the series. With age, these have dissipated to a few moments maybe clouded with Super Saiyan, but in the early days, these bursts of power were truly special and iconic to Gohan, and Gohan alone. Well, the other age boy Broly was also interesting, so why don't we take what he had and place it into Gohan? Would this even greater rage boost make Gohan even more of a force to be reckoned with? What if Gohan was more like Broly in that regard? Thanks to the mind of one Philip Perkins, one of our viewers on the What If Roundtable livestreams, we got the initial spark to see this idea come to fruition. The idea that Gohan's power would be stronger when he got mad, but then also at the same time even more uncontrollable and more enduring. Instead of just being a simple burst that lasts seconds, this would be slightly more prolonged, and as such made Gohan both a blessing for intense encounters and skirmishes, but when things did end or burnt themselves out, his rage would then become a whole other matter to deal with for our dragon team. However, our heroes have done their best to calm him down, and his power has increased, whilst his fortitude has also done so. But there is now the very real worry that he will relapse that wasn't really there in the original story. This added peril amongst their own ranks definitely ups the overall tension from the story, and that can only be a good thing in the world of Dragon Ball, right? More tension? In the last part, we were on the world of Nemec, where Yamcha, Krillin and Poir had managed to steal the Dragon Balls right from under Freezer's nose from his own ship, whilst in the disguise of Kui, done expertly by Poir, actually utilising his powers for once, which only infuriated the galactic tyrant in the long run. It's Dragon Ball, we can have some comedy in here, remember? Even with a being such as Freezer around. But, instead of going entirely nuclear on the planet right that moment, when his precious Dragon Balls were stolen right from under his nose, he decides to call in his faithful Ginyus to get rid of those buffoons. Moreover, he gets a report on a giant dragon-like creature that some of his scouts have seen in the distance recently. This is not good news for Frieza, and so to ease his growing frustration, he quickly blasts a few of his underlings away from allowing his prize to be stolen so easily, and he runs a very fiery investigation on how that clever theft was even possible. Meanwhile, Goku is on his way to Namek, still being distraught by his son's devastating potential. He didn't know what to think. I mean, sure, he was pleased to see his son be incredibly strong, and that Kami had managed to help make it more consistent than before, but he also had to remember that this power was not always on their side. And unless Gohan had actually pulled a full 180 and could easily control his power being calm and strong, nobody was safe, not even himself. This feeling of worry carried through into Goku's training. His training is even more dire than the original story, and less happy-go-lucky. He has to speed up his gravity training to dangerous levels, even for his stamina, as our hero has a lot to think about on his way. He reaches the 100 times gravity level much sooner, and even though he can handle it, his body is screaming out for relief from this sudden pressure and rapid increase. He even tests the waters with 150 times gravity, to where he manages to get to, with his body giving out much more visibly. Despite the pain though, the Zenkai from his Sensu Bean healing is quite potent, as we will touch upon later. Meanwhile, the hiding place of the Nemec expedition is soon compromised. It is discovered by some Freezer scouts who have been informed by their bosses and their scouters that they need to actually be careful. They act very stealthily and get almost to the front door, but they are no match for our heroes. Even though they can fend off the scout party, there is the very stark reality that this base is no longer safe. They know that they have been discovered, and as such, they need to move and find a new place to call Sanctuary. With Gohan keeping watch, Bulma packs the capsule away, and they hastily run away from the cave. Doing their best to hide their powers and flying low to the ground to avoid detection on the off chance of any flying minions about. Back at the Super Kami Tower, Guru tells Nail that his days are numbered, and that the Dragon Balls risk disappearing forever, or even in their planet, if things don't go in their favour soon. 
As he unlocks Piccolo's potential, he tasks the group with protecting the orbs until that powerful ally of theirs arrives, and they can further push back against the menace that is Frieza and his force. Piccolo is pretty shocked by the trust that the old Namekian has given him despite his more malevolent past. I know that you feel that you are not worthy of this power, but I sense that you have learned from your and your father's mistakes. You have grown into a fine Namekian, my friend. Use this power well, and make our people proud. Piccolo feels a little touched by this, but tries to conceal it from the others. But he is actually starting to feel a genuine link between himself and his long-forgotten people. He agrees to this plea. Our heroes spend the next few days doing their best to hide from the Frieza soldiers, as the Emperor's patience wears thin. They manage to find a second location for their base, but they are still not taking any chances, and they are keeping their powers as low as possible for as long as possible. To their detriment though, the Ginyu Force have landed, and they manage to find our heroes again, despite their caution. The resulting skirmish is pretty intense, and does result in a lot of injury and strife, but our heroes manage to take down Goldo fairly quickly, despite the formidable might of the team. With the addition of Nail and a powered up Piccolo, they come in to fight Raccoon and Jace respectively with Berta being challenged, with Berta being challenged by everyone else. Meanwhile, the leader Ginyu is watching from afar, having the utmost faith in his men, feeling no need to join in himself. They can get this done soon enough, and then they can report to Frieza and say that the deed was done, and that they can carry on with whatever they were doing. But the Earthlings and Namekians are slowly starting to win, much to the boss's astonishment. Ginyu then has to take matters into his own hands, of course, and helps out his crew especially with Raccoon, in dispatching Nail, who although powerful himself, cannot take both Ginyu and his chief brute at the same time. That's just far too much for the strongest Namekian to cope with. He gets wounded pretty badly, and as Ginyu and Raccoon set their sights on Piccolo fighting off Jace, Goku lands in his space pod and, well, does what Goku does with Raccoon in the original. And this does upset the balance of power in our hero's favour once again. Ginyu is absolutely beside himself with the dispatching of yet another member of his team, and one of his strongest too. Meanwhile, Piccolo manages to defeat Jace, causing even more anguish for Ginyu, and decides to check on Nail. Nail reveals to Piccolo the whole secret of Namekian fusion, and the two fuse, much to the remaining members of the Ginyu forces' belief and shock. As now, the power levels of both Goku and Piccolo are completely off the scale. Remember, Piccolo had a potential unlock on top of this. Berta also falls to the damage inflicted by Goku and Piccolo, with now the lone Ginyu having to take on both opponents. He even tries to change bodies with Goku, but not even this works. We have a cat now thoroughly out of the bag. Puar transforms into Goku and gets in between them. He thinks that he has become Goku and for a second revels in his achievement. But once Ginyu opens his eyes, he sees Goku nearby. That's weird, he thinks. Ginyu hadn't expected that. Now he is... A cat, because he can't keep up the transformation because he doesn't know how. Poir Ginyu quickly grabs him by the tail that used to be his own and tosses him around, like he was Thor tossing Mjolnir. Whoa, is that you little buddy? Stammers a very confused Yamcha. Yeah, look Yamcha, now I can transform and change bodies. Pretty cool, eh? This is Poir with Ginyu's voice, but it's still a very joyous moment for the cat. Not only has he helped in terms of aiding Goku, but he now also has a body which can keep up with the dragon teams in terms of over and out strength, and even outmatch Yamcha. But that scene gets interrupted when Pua Ginyu then gets blasted by a lone death beam. As entertaining as that was, I am quite saddened by the loss of my beloved force. I require catharsis of the highest regard. Goku decides to challenge the tyrant first, asking Piccolo to protect the rest of the heroes as they embark on a hasty retreat. Luckily, they have Dende with them, who attempts to fix Pua while Goku decides to dance with Frieza's first form. But, as much as he's able to keep up with first form Frieza, the second form starts to become a bit of a challenge. Frieza manages to beat up Goku pretty badly, but before he is able to finish him, Piccolo attacks the tyrant, being much stronger than he had anticipated. To Piccolo, this is quite the thrill. That, and he was stronger than Goku. That was quite nice too. The rest have to do some quick thinking. Gohan, who had mostly been on the sidelines for all of this, is now coming back into the fore. He is now on the verge of going berserk, but his lessons are showing some kind of promise. He is exhibiting signs of being able to hold back this power instead of letting it wash over him right from the start without pause. Dende reveals that he can only stabilize Puar and Goku at the moment, 
but in order to heal them fully, he would need more time. Yamcha recalls that there were some healing pods on Frieza's ship, and since Frieza is here, the biggest threat there is out of the picture. Our heroes make a run for the vessel, fighting off the remaining troops there, and put Goku and Pua in the capsules, thanks to Bulma's quick thinking. Now the fight between Piccolo and Frieza seems to be pretty interesting, as the tyrant is even enjoying it a little bit. He goes into his third form, but since Piccolo's potential was unlocked as well as fusing, he is actually able to at least keep Frieza's third form at bay, occupied with a very captivating battle. This is very much taking up Frieza's attention, and since he has one more form in reserve, he isn't getting angry. He does get bored of toying with the Namekian, and goes into his fourth and final form. You gave me some entertainment, Namekian, and for that, I will only hurt you badly instead of killing you. I will allow you to watch me attain my immortality and begin my conquest of the galaxy. He beats up Piccolo to within an inch of his life and takes him back to the ship, well aware that the Z fighters went there to heal their allies. He didn't mind this though. It was good that more people could witness him achieve eternal life. When he finds him there, he tosses the injured Piccolo at their feet. Now, my Dragon Balls, please or I will have no choice but to blow your friends in the pods up. Our heroes are in no position to bargain, and they hand over the Dragon Balls, hoping that they can distract Frieza for somehow, just some way, to give their friends more time to heal. That Goku will regain health, this can't be the end, surely? Frieza is handed a bag, which were meant to be holding Dragon Balls, only to discover that they have turned into stone. I fail to see the point of this joke. What kind of trick is this? Explain. Piccolo laughs, spitting out some blood. All that carnage you caused put the planet's elder in so much distress that <laughs> his poor heart couldn't hold on any longer. And without him around, the balls are inert. You lose Frieza. Keen to shut the slug up, Frieza is about to crush Piccolo, but after an angry shout, he regains his composure and calmly blasts the pod containing Goku into pieces. Somehow, the Saiyan himself survives this, but his wounds get even more severe. Now Frieza is ready to blast everyone else, but something is happening to Gohan. Perhaps this was all too much for him to bear. Hmm? What's with that child? Was it your daddy that I blasted to bits then? Oh, good! But Gohan's eyes are pure white, and the only thing he sees now is red. He charges on Frieza, who isn't prepared for the power of the charge, as the charm blasts him through the wall. He's not nearly powerful enough to really hurt Frieza, but he is pretty fast and strong enough to move him. Meanwhile, Dende concentrates all his power on healing Piccolo and Goku. He has to give all his life energy to at least put them into a state that allows walking. Dende sacrifices his life so that they could live. Frieza, meanwhile, seems like he is attacked by an annoying bird that he can't fend off. Finally, he manages to grab Gohan by the head and yanks him on the ground with an amazing strength. Seeing that makes Goku roar in primal anger. Something has changed. And that's where we're going to be leaving things for right now. So what do you folks think? Do you think that Gohan will handle this? Will he, enraged and an angry Goku, win the day? Leave a comment below and let's get this discussion going. And I shall see you in the next video. Catch you later!